Good evening, commissioners. I'm Sue Exline, and I am the new Planning Commission liaison. Nice to meet you all. I will um, ask for roll. And thank you for your patience. This, this is my, my first time. So, Commissioner Bondano. Here. Commissioner Munier. Here. Hey. Commissioner Martinez. Here. Commissioner Shu. Commissioner Shu is absent. Vice Chair Hunter. Here. And Chair Radcliffe. Here. Um, at this point, I'd like to mention that uh, Commissioner Schmidt has resigned from the commission um, and he is taking a, a seat on our uh, police uh, advisory board. So we're very excited um, for him for that. We will agendize for our next meeting a thank you and um, to him. So, because we always want to say thank you for those who have served the city. So that will be an agendized item on our next meeting on May 18th. Um, right now, we will go to minutes. We have no minutes, so we will go on to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would make like to make a public comment? Public comment is an area where anything that is not on the agenda may be addressed. Uh, if you have a comment, would you raise your hand? I am not seeing any, okay, great. Then we will um, go on to the consent calendar. There's nothing on the consent calendar this evening. So we will go straight into our presentation. I believe we have a staff presentation from um, Emily Wolfson. Yes, I uh, failed to introduce the staff here tonight. Chair okay. Redcliffe, so if I could do that now, thank you. Uh, with us tonight is William Chu, Senior Planner, Emily Wolfson, Associate Planner, uh, Veronica Ramirez, the City Attorney, and Christina, Christina Mateo, Administrative Secretary and the Meeting Host. Uh, Emily will give the presentation for staff. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Thank you to the Chair, to the Planning Commission, um, like Sue said, my name is Emily Wolfson and I'm the project planner for 150 Charter. Um, so I'm going to briefly describe the project site, the project description, a summary of entitlements, as well as describe the site and building design. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So the project site is a flat lot uh, consisting of three parcels located on Charter Street. It's about approximately 600 feet from El Camino Real. And it would combine three parcels to create a 78,000 square foot site. Um, it's located in the mixed use corridor El Camino Real zoning district. Currently on the site, there's a, a grocery store and surfing surface parking lot, which is outlined and the red um, outline here, which would be demolished as part of the project. Uh, it's adjacent to the Woodside Central Shopping Center located to the east. And to the immediate north are Caltrans railroad tracks. Residents are interspersed um, throughout with some auto service garages, gas stations, other markets, um, as well as, as I mentioned, the Woodside Central Shopping Center directly to the east. Next slide, please. So um, project description. So the applicant proposes to construct a four-story 72 unit residential building, uh, which includes 11 below market rate units at the moderate level, including one two bedroom and 10 three bedroom units um, as affordable. And uh, the project site is four stories or 50 feet in height. Um, I'm gonna be kind of going over how it, uh, complies with all the various zoning standards in a bit, but um, it also has a total of 144 parking spaces for the resident, residential units, including 18 guest parking spaces, um, which are all located on the ground floor within a shared podium parking structure underneath the residential units. Um, the project also includes residential courtyards of varying width 
um, which is intended to provide areas of open space and recreation for the residents. Next slide, please. Um, so this slide shows um, the compliance with for sale affordable units. As I mentioned, this is a for sale site. Um, there will be 11 affordable units uh, on the site. Afford just to remind folks, the affordable housing ordinance requires 15% of units to be for sale at moderate income, uh, which this project does comply with. Moderate income is 120% of AMI, and it's required to be sold at the same level, which is 120% of AMI for approximately 30 years. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned briefly, the, pro the proposed project complies with all related zoning standards, including parking height, density, and setbacks. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions at the end if folks have specific questions about this. I know there's a lot on the slide, but um, bottom line is it complies with all zoning standards, including density heights, uh, ground floor height, building length, setbacks, open space, parking, bicycle, bicycle parking, and uh, sidewalk width. Next slide, please. So what, um, in terms of entitlements, what is being requested? Um, there's five different entitlements. There's the plan development permit, the condo permit, the tentative map, the architectural permit, as well as the affordable housing plan. Um, so briefly, a condo permit and plan development permit allows for individual ownership of the units in compliance with the Muni code and the proposed intent of the plan development permit. Um, it would re require approval of a tentative map uh, as part of Article 3 of the Muni Code Subdivision Ordinance. And then in terms of our, the architectural permit, it would require it because of proposing multifamily residential units. As I mentioned, um, or at, as I outlined in my findings, the, uh, to approve the permit are set forth in the resolution, but to summarize, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the design um, in terms of how it complies with the architectural permit in the next few slides. And then again, I mentioned with the affordable housing plan, the proposed project does plan on having 11 for sale units, um, which is the 15% of the affordable housing that is required for our ordinance. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the site design, um, I should mention, just kind of backing up slightly, that the Architectural Advisory Committee reviewed the project on two separate occasions back in September of 2020 and most recently in March 2021. Um, and they recommended approval, and that's why we're here tonight. Um, but in terms of the project design, the project would front Carter Street with pedestrian access and vehicular access through a private driveway on the west side of Trucker Street on a shared ingress egress easement on the east side. Um, the intent of the zoning district is to provide opportunities for development that supports transit and facilitating street level and pedestrian activity. The project does this by um, including a 12 foot sidewalk, new street trees, loading area, pedestrian scale lighting, landscaping and bioretention. Um, I'm sure the applicant is gonna kind of walk through some of these design uh, implements as well, but just that's a brief summary of that. Next slide, please. So in terms of buildings of design, it's designed in a contemporary style and utilizes articulated elevations, varied roof heights and a mix of materials to break up massing height and scale. And the final design included a mix of bright colors um, and more subdued colors, which was a request of the Architectural Advisory Committee. Next slide, please. This is a screenshot of the ground floor plan. Um, parking would be on the ground floor. And then the living area would be on floors two through four. Next slide, please. In terms of open space, um, the buildings and courtyard design have been uh, redesigned through recommendations through the AAC to provide additional privacy and noise mitigation measures. Um, the south facing facade, facade was redesigned with the incorporation of a sound barrier um, and a new arrangement of forming materials. 
And at the grade level, there's small planting and vine pockets, which will be placed against the building. Next slide, please. Um, so this is just a, a screenshot of the landscaping, which I mentioned um, is going to be providing bioretention um, and offering nice sight lines in terms of offering, you know, pretty trees and things to look at throughout the ground floor of the site. Next slide, please. So really, this is the meat of the presentation, but just in summary, um, staff finds that the applicant has adequately complied with the required findings and proposes that the Planning Commission grant approval for the project, um, given that they comply with plan development permit, condo permit, architectural permit, tentative map, affordable housing plan, as well as the fact that it's exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. We did prepare uh, a qualified info exemption um, for that. So that concludes staff presentations. I'm happy to answer any clarifying questions uh, from the commission at this time. Great, thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, are there any clarifying questions from commissioners? I'm not seeing any hands up, but I don't have everybody in my view. Okay, I take it that we have no clarifying questions. Great, then we, we will move on to um, the applicant presentation. Do we have an applicant presentation? Yes, we do. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, we great. What's last name for me, Franco? Yes, it's Zaragoza. Just Zaragoza. how it looks. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would turn my camera on. I'm sorry that I had to switch rooms, so I don't have one on this computer. But anyways, um, Emily did a great job doing a, a brief overview. I have some similar slides, but I'll give you a little more meat to the description of the project and kind of go over some of the more details. Um, so again, my name is Franco Zaragoza. I'm a partner with Lever Design Partners. Um, this project is uh, located at 110, 150 Charter Street. It's on the end of a cul-de-sac. We have our neighboring sites, um, the Union Pacific Railway to the north and we're bound by uh, two edges with the existing uh, Target store. Uh, next slide, please. We're proposing <clears throat> a four structure, a uh, four story structure containing 72 units, uh, 164 parking spaces at grade below our podium. We have a main pedestrian entrance off of Charter Street on the Southern edge of the site, which is the right hand side of the property on this page. Uh, we have a 30 foot wide egress and ingress easement that we share with our neighbor. On the northern edge, we're providing a new 20 foot wide public road and an eight foot wide sidewalk. The road is a uh, future plan to, con to connect uh, behind the future development of the Target store, um, creating a full connection to the Westmoreland Avenue on the opposite side of Target. Uh, next slide, please. Our project consists of seven ground floor units facing Charter Street, and we have parking provided uh, behind this, tucked behind the, the street facing facade units. We have drive through access from the north and south areas of the building. Uh, next slide. Uh, landscape will be provided to create a residential scale. As Emily mentioned, there's going to be some nice sight lines. Uh, we're also providing a couple bulb outs, which will manage some stormwater management. Um, we're going to have uh, seven privatized entrances to these units at the front. So there are layering and screen effects um, that we're using landscaping to create the privacy and the buffered zones. Next slide, please. Uh, at the podium level, we have a collection of three-story townhome units. It's arranged in a manner of a pedestrian street. Uh, we provide intimate residential scale with privatized unit entrances. Next slide. So here's kind of the overview of the landscape plan. Um, we worked with our landscape architect very closely and also through the AAC process and staff. Um, we feel like we've, we've really enhanced the design over the, the process of this project. 
Um, we've created some really nice privatized entrances to these units. We have some high-low planters along these walkways. There are privatized entrances, like I mentioned, with patios. Um, so there's added depth for privacy, the screened elements for privacy, and the planted for privacy. So we really focused on creating a nice private um, residential experience. There are some water features placed along um, some strategic locations. As you know, we do uh, front the railway. So we did incorporate some sound walls along the northern and southern edges of our courts. Uh, we placed some water features directly along those elements as well. Next slide, please. So this is just kind of a typical plan of the second level of the townhomes. Um, very similar to the third, they're kind of mixed with master bedrooms. And in some units we have uh, uh, up to two bedrooms per, per plan. Next slide, please. Uh, the third floor, like I mentioned, is very similar, but you can see that the building is starting to now create some ins and outs. We have some articulation um, that you'll see in some future slides where we're creating setbacks purposely for exposure to getting into the courts. Um, we do have some decks on the upper floors, so we're stepping back the building, creating sort of a more um, rhythmed and pedestrian friendly scale. Next slide. Uh, here's a typical section of our building. This is taken from the east-west direction. Um, this is to show sort of the, ex the um, interaction with the podium level at the courts. We strategically placed angled roofs on the east direction. This allows more solar exposure uh, for the morning hours in the court. We felt, felt that was a, a, an important gesture to kind of maximize the amount of exposure and sun exposure that we get here. Next slide, please. Um, you saw this on previous slides through Emily's um, presentation. This is the overview of the Southeast view on Charter Street. Again, we worked with staff very closely. The AAC process greatly um, helped us develop this design. Uh, the forms and articulations that we've created kind of are uh, reflecting that residential scale of 20 to 25 foot wide mass elements. Uh, we have breaks that recede back to the rear form. And at the base, you can see we have some planted elements that provide additional screening at our ground floor entries. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just the opposite edge on Charter Street. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a close up of our uh, entry, our arrival. We have uh, a formal entry sequence with um, highlighted forms on both sides. It's sort of a symmetrical experience. We have a decorative gate at the entrance, an overhead arbor with hanging vines and um, some sort of uh, catenary lights that will be uh, also hanging in these elements for a nice experience as you approach the, uh, the lobby and the um, entry sequence up to the podium level. Next slide, please. So this is an inner courtyard view. Um, there's a, a bunch of snippets that I did, and, and these were studies that we were showing the AAC. So I included them in this presentation. So I'll just kind of quickly run through just so you can kind of get an overview of that experience that we've created up at the, at the podium level. This view is looking back at the entry sequence. Uh, next slide. Here's another view, again, showing the entry sequence, but now we're looking more um, west or northwest. Uh, this facade that we're looking at is, um, it's sort of a repeated facade. So we've created the western facing um, facades in this pattern where we have the top floor articulated and set back and the, uh, the ground floor is uh, again emphasizing those uh, setback uh, private entrances. Uh, next slide please. So here's the opposite facing uh, facade in these courts. Uh, again, we angled the top floor to allow for more solar exposure, uh, emphasizing a uh, sort of a two-story building in this case to, to minimize the presence of a three-story townhome. Next slide, please. This is a similar slide to the previous one. Um, it's just, again, the Eastern facing facade in the, in 
the rear court. Next slide. Here's another view uh, looking back at sort of the central spine of the court. This is one of the informal um, areas that we have for uh, turf and, and sort of an informal seating area. Next slide. Put this together quickly just to kind of do an overview of the material palette. Um, it's kind of a mixture of high quality materials. We're using cement plaster for the, the, the main mass of the building, which is the, the lighter white forms and then the uh, articulated forms that are um, the one and two story sort of masses are um, metal panel and the array of the kind of the three colors that we we show here the a light gray bronze and kind of the uh, medium blue. Um, we have a laser cut metal panel that will be used for our railings and decks. And that's kind of just a quick overview of the, the palette. The next few slides, you can go to the next slide. The next few slides, I'll just run through very quickly. I just put these together just so you can kind of get an overall sense of the elevation and the material palette coming together. So this is the Charter Street elevation. Next slide. Uh, this is the Southern facade and it's very similar to the Northern facade. Next slide. And then this is just uh, one of the East facing facades in the court. So just put that together just so you can kind of see the whole composition. Um, ran through it quickly. I think my time was almost up. So that concludes my presentation. Um, and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Zaragoza. Um, any clarifying questions from the commission? I'm not seeing any hands raised. All right. Commissioner, Chair, Commissioner yeah. Martinez has his hand raised. Okie dokie. I must have gone by you really fast, sorry. Uh, Mr. Martinez, Commissioner Martinez, question? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a, a quick question. Um, you know, I know this is located near a few different schools, so I was just wondering what the outreach to those schools has looked like. Is this a question for me or, or staff? Um, I, I know there, there was the typical notification period, but um, it, as far as the owner reaching out to the schools, I, I don't think there's been any, any additional uh, networking for that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Zargos. I was just curious about that. Great. Sure. Any other questions from the commission? All right, uh, seeing none, we will move on, on to uh, the public hearing phase. Uh, let's see. So right now so, uh, we will open it up to public hearing. This is where the public can make comments following a procedural change for public comment in line with city council hearings. We will no longer read written comments into the record. We will take public comment from those join, joining us through Zoom first. If you've logged into Zoom through your computer, please click the raised hand button. If you had dialed in, please enter star nine now. If you had dialed in, you may get, begin speaking once you are signaled that your audio has been unmuted. In order to see how many speakers we have for the general public, I ask that everyone who wishes to speak to raise their hand uh, so that we can get some idea. And is... Okay, I am not seeing any raised hands. Is that what you are seeing, Ms. Alexa? Alexa? Uh, yeah, no problem, that's fine. Great. Correct, I, I don't see any raised hands either. Great, um, in that case, we will uh, move forward and we will, um, we will go on to discussions among the commissioners. So I'd like to open the meeting up now to uh, discussion. Um, any comments, Mr. Commissioner Bondano? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, actually, I'll start um, first with staff and then if we need to go to the applicant, that's fine. So Ms. Xline, thank you for the presentation. My question is, could you just confirm the, um, 
the reasoning and the rationale for explicitly locating the affordable units within the project and their placement? I would like to ask if, Emily, if you could answer that question. Um, sure, I might also defer to Franco for this, but um, my understanding is the intent was to uh, have an on-site requirement for, uh, on-site is a requirement for the ordinance. So in terms of um, having it on site, that's the reasoning in terms of the location of where they are um, throughout the property. I don't know, Franco, there's there's something that you can add to that. that yeah, piece. sure. I'd, I'd be happy to, to add sort of the reasoning and, and how we came up with the arrangement. Um, we, I, we do a lot of um, sort of affordable disbursements in, in pretty much every project that we do. Um, and each, I know each city kind of has different requirements. Um, me personally, I've actually taken it where I'm looking for a very even distribution throughout the project. I'm actually looking for a distribution that reflects the average unit, the average unit size. So it's not trying to put them in, in unwanted areas. It's actually just trying to give an even disbursement. And that was the approach here. So um, the, the rationale was basically to try to create a, a, uh, an accommodation that is reflecting the average unit. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Zaragoza. And if that's the answer I was looking for, so unless Ms. Ramirez has something else to add with her hand up um, for clarification. No, Commissioner Bondano, the only thing I was going to mention is that the city actually requires this as well. So I'm um, happy to hear that Mr. Zaragoza did this on their own, um, but definitely an, a requirement of our ordinance as well. Yeah, thank you. Again, Mr. Zaragoza, that's exactly what I was looking for. I appreciate you confirming the fact that you're not sort of segregating them into one corner of the project uh, and that they are dis distributed. Uh, and that was fantastic. Could you also just quickly confirm, I know there's a city requirement, but I'd love to have you hear you confirm that um, that the affordable units will be identical in matters of construction, uh, quality, um, fur finishings and furnishings, such that one walking into a unit would not know or be able to detect any difference? Yes, confirmed. Uh, we're not changing any type of construction for these units. They're going to be built just like the others. Okay. And explicitly sort of identifying them also um, allows you and the city to keep the, keep the bedrooms, right? The bedrooms, uh, the units that we're looking for. But at any point in time, again, from a, from a construction and a quality perspective, one theoretically could swap out the affordable unit for one of the market rates down the road. And again, uh, a, a tenant would not know, would not know or care or perceive any difference. Yes, correct. There, there would be no difference between the units. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Great, thank you, Commissioner Bondano. Any other comments from commissioners? I see, am I seeing Vice Chair Hunter? Uh, yes, oh, I don't know what just happened to my, I don't know what happened to my, to my background. I called you and you just blinked off. I don't know what my happened. video on, the background disappeared. Well, anyway, uh, uh, I had just, I had a couple of questions right now. Um, one is um, the project is at a lower density than is allowed. This is 40 units per acre, as the staff report points out, and uh, uh, 60 units are, um, are allowed. Um, and of course, we'd like to see a lot of uh, units um, you know, built. Um, is, is, is the reason for that because these are larger units? This is, I guess this is for uh, Mr. Zaragoza probably. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so we worked closely with the, um, actually our neighbors and sort of the uh, staff as well. Uh, we, and the product that we've designed is a um, typology of, of sort of a, a townhome mix that is sort of needed and wanted in this area. We felt that uh, more of a 
a uh, standard sort of courtyard building with your conventional flats um, is probably not the best for this typology. Um, we have, like I mentioned, we have Target as our neighbor. Um, we have uh, a railway nearby. So we wanted to create a, a, a building that would actually be desirable for people to move in this area. It is kind of a transitional area. So these townhomes are kind of um, units that are, are needed that we've heard actually from our, our community as well. Um, we, we've had early conversations with our neighbor Target. So part of the, uh, the negotiations about different types of building forms and, and typologies of units were, were actually started quite early um, in that design. And we work with staff as well to, to kind of come up with the right unit mix and, and the type of unit, units that we provided. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, it's yes. Yeah, so um, between the size of the units and the typology, as you call it, um, this is really what can be uh, can can be fit there, and um, I definitely appreciate that. Um, the, the one concern I would have, you know, for people uh, who are going to be residents here, is that it really is right next to the train tracks. You know, I went and looked at it, and it's, uh, you know, there's just a few yards between this and the tracks. And the people who are going to be in the units on that end of it um, are going to be subject to a lot of noise. You mentioned some noise proofing and some fountains, um, mm -hmm. but um, did the architectural advisory committee? address the noise issue and um, what have you done especially to you know mitigate noise for the people in those uh, and you I guess that would be the north end um, you know yeah. in those end units that's going to be right next to the trains definitely um, yeah so this was an L, an item that we actually took very close to heart um, we we signed up acoustical engineers early on to to help us uh, through that conversation um, the AAC also addressed it, so it was an opportunity for us to kind of clarify uh, the steps that we made to the, to the building and the design. And actually through the AAC process, we actually um, improved and, and developed um, some even higher standards than what we were previously doing. Um, we worked with uh, uh, Salter, the acoustical engineer, and they've actually provided a nice summary of uh, building construction type to allow us to create um, higher STC ratings for these exterior walls. So we will be implementing a different type of construction for these edges and their returned walls as well. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we've incorporated uh, sound walls that are gonna be about 20 feet high um, in the courtyard. So they'll actually be screening um, the outdoor elements as well. So when you're outside um, in conjunction with the fountains, you know, we are trying to create this experience where you're not going to always hear the trains. It's going to be kind of a, a, a dampened white noise um, kind of experience. And, and, and these walls also have openings. So they're not just um, straight, you know, uh, completely cladded walls. They're actually openings that are gonna have some glazing, which the acoustical engineer also gave recommendations as far as what type of infill we need to kind of carry that consistency of uh, acoustical um, integrity. So we, we've taken, you know, not only for the, for the unit walls, we're gonna be, like I mentioned, improving those exterior walls. We're also gonna be improving the sound walls and the exterior and all the glazing associated with it. Okay, that was a uh, great and comprehensive answer. Thank you. Um, yeah, I really appreciate how seriously you took that, and um, that was more more than I would have uh, imagined. Um, you know, went into your uh, in, in into the soundproofing here, so that is great. Um, I don't know. I didn't seem like other commissioners had comments, so I've just my I have some just brief comments, um, which is that I'm very happy to support this project. I think it's a high quality project that's needed. Um, I love the fact that most of the units are three bedrooms and are meant for families. Um, it's fairly rare that we find uh, for sale units in, in transit-oriented transit development, you know, um, near El Camino and downtown. I think that is a real positive. And I like the, uh, you know, I mean, of course it's required, but the 11 below market units, uh, which are interspersed as Commissioner Bondano uh, pointed out, um, 
And actually, the, the fact that they're moderate income units uh, sort of helps us in our um, you know, housing element because that was that's one of the uh, types that uh, we're a little behind on in our current um, you know, arena housing element. Um, so um, would love to hear other commissioners' perspectives, but uh, I think this is a good project. I also, I don't. Also, I did want to uh, thank the uh, AAC. I don't know if, if any of them are on the phone right now, but. Uh, you know, they seem to have um, really uh, taken a keen eye to this uh, and very detail oriented. And it seems like they have, um, in, um, in conjunction with the developer has made this a uh, quite a good project. So thank you all. Great, thank you, Commissioner Hunter. Uh, Commissioner Martinez, you have a question, comment? Just comments, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to just build on some of the comments that's Vice Chair Hunter had shared. Um, you know, I was really happy to see just the collaborative spirit between the Architectural Advisory Committee and the developer. Um, you know, I think the changes that were reflected just made for a, a really beautiful building. And it was exciting to see the, the green space, uh, community green space that's uh, being proposed, um, especially just because there aren't any parks within a, a walking radius. I did a, a quick search and it seems like the only option there is to cross El Camino and walk a few blocks to get to the next public park. So it was good to see that. Um, and the you know, prospect of home ownership, I thought was really exciting. Um, you know, allowing folks to have some sense of housing security um, you know, would be incredible, especially for folks who uh, you know, can't normally compete in the, the current housing market. So I thought that was um, great to see. And the range of densities I think will also provide you know, a critical opportunity just for working families that might risk, you know, overcrowding just to afford their home and, you know, new families that are looking to set down some roots. So, you know, I just thought overall it was a, a smart use of the space and, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing what the rest of my colleagues think. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you, Commissioner Martinez. Any other commissioner comments? Seeing no other, Commissioner Bondano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I clearly am very much in support of this uh, project, this application. Um, I appreciate the, um, the home ownership, the affordability, uh, and at that level. So I don't wanna repeat what's already been said. Um, I want to thank the applicant for working through the process with the Architectural Advisory Committee, as also was stated. So time well spent, in my opinion. So thank you for going through that and producing a product that uh, if there are no other comments from commissioners, I would like to offer a motion. Um, well, I will make a few comments and then I'll come back to you for a motion. How's that? I just want to echo what my fellow commissioners have said and I really appreciate um, this would be so easy for you to make all these buildings very, um, very symmetrical, very rectangle. You've given a, a lot of different elements to all the frontages, which really helps um, in the design and makes it much more attractive. And uh, thrilled that there are so many three bedroom units. This is absolutely um, something that we desperately need, especially in uh, ownership housing. So I'm thrilled uh, that you, Mr. Zaragoza, that you um, did so many um, three bedroom units and there is not a single uh, studio in this project, which thrills me to death. So um, having said that, I will turn it back over to Commissioner Bondano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution presented in our Staff report approving the project based on compliance with zoning standards and required findings subject to the conditions of approval and upon a determination that the proposed project is exempt from CEQA under the guideline section 15332 for infill development projects. Thank you, Commissioner Bondano. Do I have a second? Second. It, was that you, Mr. Martinez? Commissioner Martinez, I wasn't sure who. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, great, sorry. It's so hard when I can't see all you guys. Uh, super, so I have a motion and a second. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Okay. 
So um, just one quick uh, clarification. Do I call for all of the commissioners, the ones who also made the motions? Yes. Yes, okay. Commissioner Bondano. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Schmidt is no longer here. And Commissioner Munier. Yes. Commissioner Shu is absent. Commissioner Hunter. Yes. And Chair Radcliffe. Yes. Great. Our motion carries. Um, we have approved 150 Charter Street. Uh, now we will move on to uh, consent calendar. We have no items. Oops, I don't mean consent. I'm sorry. Matters of com uh, commission interest. So um, are there any commissioner announcements? Otherwise, I'll go straight to staff. Seeing none, I will go to straight to Ms. Exline. So I just wanted to um, mention some upcoming agenda items. At your May 18th Planning Commission hearing, you have three items scheduled. The residential design guidelines, there will be an update on the housing element, and there will be um, time to recognize Commissioner Schmidt. Perfect. On June 1st, there will be HRAC appointments, and this will be an early start time, and two projects. 935 Gilston Road and 2603 Broadway. Great. So we'll be starting the um, meeting at six with interviews. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Good to note. Super. And um, also not, not on this slide, but just um, a quick update on some recent city council agenda items. For, uh, that might be of interest to the commission? Please. There was, um, the city council had a second reading on the child care and miscellaneous zoning amendments on April 12th, 2021, which this planning commission recommended on December 1st of 2020. The city council had a study session on the regional housing needs analysis, housing element, environmental justice element, and the safety element on April 26th, and you will hear that same presentation on May 18th. It's all combined into the housing element update that we mentioned here. Great. Um, and finally, on um, the accessory dwelling units was reintroduced for a first reading on April 12th, 2021. Super, great, thank you very much. Um, well, that concludes our agenda items for the evening. Uh, so I will uh, adjourn the meeting until May 18th. Great to see everyone. Thank you.